Guys, Dead by Daylight is entering its six, that's nine, six year anniversary. And I've personally been with the Dead by Daylight community since August of 2018. So what I wanted to do today was share with you some of the greatest Dead by Daylight moments that you guys can enjoy some of the things I've enjoyed over my time playing Dead by Daylight. So let's just get straight into this list in no particular order. Number one is Otstava in Hexy's best of the best tournament. It's a rematch, a blood match between the two teams and it's Otstava on Rex Yard, bringing it first here. Now, whether you love or hate Dead by Daylight competitive matches, what Otstava did in Hexy's best of the best tournament is nothing short of spectacular. He went into this match, a quarterfinal match, picking Plague, which in its own right is pretty interesting, but not enough to feature on this list. What makes this one of the greatest moments in Dead by Daylight history is he selected the perk Hex Devour Hope and he hid that he had this perk until he got five stacks of Devour Hope. When you get five stacks, you can instantly Mori any survivor in the match, regardless of whether you've hooked them or not. No matter oh what. my god, I've just realized something, Hexy. This is crazy. If he downs the survivors using his special attack power, the survivors will not be notified that Devour Hope is in the game. They will not get an exposed status effect. So Odd Starver is trying to utilize his pools of devotion here to hide and mask the Devour Hope oh all the way god. to five tokens so that the survivors do not have the invasion. Big brain. This should be five tokens, actually. If he gets this hook, that's going to be five tokens. And as you can imagine, when Hexy and myself were commentating, seeing that Ot Starver was hiding the stacks, the excitement grew ever closer as he started to reach that fifth stack of Devour Hope. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Imagine my speed. <laughs> Hold me, Dowsy. This is going to be insane. So we will get the full points here if he can get the downs. So this is yeah, super alf on his death hook. So realistically, he just wants a hook here and, and yeah, master sure. the Devour Hope even further. No, he's, he's revealing it. He is revealing it. Oh, he is revealing it. The Mori is no, going to come through. It. Super Alf didn't need to be moored here. He it, he was actually dead on hook already. So that is going to be four points awarded for the, the hook and the kill. And that is going to be the Devour Hope revealed. And that is going to be Malika getting rid of it immediately. I think that's a misplay. At the end of the day, Dowsy, he was able to moor someone in the middle of a match, right? And just got to show off just how cool that was in the middle of a match. I mean, the absolute sheer balls of Otstava to go into a quarterfinal match for a tournament worth 15,000 US dollars picking a killer that everyone thinks is very weak, selecting Devour Hope, which is an extremely risky perk in normal matches of Dead by Daylight, and then managing to hide the Devour Hope stacks until he got five stacks versus Shift W Gamers. It was something that you just had to be there to witness. It looks like the distance has been gained and Malika goes down, and that is going to be a 11 hook game coming through from Ots and Darvas playing, tying Aaron from Oracle for the highest hook game we've oh, had so, so far in the tournament. Number two on my list is one of the most skillful things I've ever seen a killer player do in Dead by Daylight. And it's when Scott Jund was playing some Huntress on Father Campbell's Chapel. I watched this clip so many times when I first saw it. I just couldn't believe that you could hit two survivors at the exact same time with two separate hatchet shots. Scott's reaction as well, his little giggle that he does in absolute disbelief is so cute. Oh! I did it! I did the double hit! Holy shit, I don't get excited about shots anymore, but holy fuck! And I actually really miss when Scott used to only play Hunter on Sunny Stream back before Demo and Oni and Elden Ring stole his heart from us. Number three is iconic for like all of the wrong reasons. It features Matthew Coat, Dead by Daylight's game director, the big boss for Dead by Daylight. And he's had some really funny quotes over the years. I think we did a pretty good job so far. Uh, another question, playing killers uh, was fun a long time ago, but now it's only stressful, but that's an opinion, a valid opinion. Uh, do you have any plans or ideas how you would like to improve the killer imp experience? Well, I, I would say maybe try Survivor for a bit or play something else for a, a week. Try Civilization or something. Just for a refreshing change. I shouldn't be saying that. Should I be saying that? It's a good game, just play that. No, Bjorn is telling me I shouldn't be saying that. Okay. But there's one time that Matthew Cote wishes he didn't do something on camera. I'm sure it was when he was at a Korean expo center playing some hag 
on the Korean Dead by Daylight server. And unfortunately for Matthew, this might be one of the most embarrassing games of Dead by Daylight ever played. You're the game director of Dead by Daylight. Everyone looks up to you and your opinions on the game. And you sit down to show the world this game that you've designed, you've created, and you don't manage to get a single hook as hag versus these Korean players. <laughs> And as you can see, this is like a really old version of Dead by Day. Like flashlights used to blind you IRL as well as in game, and they were really quick depending on the add ons you were using. And poor Matthew gets absolutely bullied by these Korean tryhards whilst just trying to show off some hag at this expo center. And what's hilarious is at the end of the game, one of the survivors in the lobby calls Dead by Daylight's game director a noob killer to his face in endgame chat, just showing that toxicity is everywhere in Dead by Daylight. And this is what Matthew had to say at the end of the game. Uh, the flashlights are extremely powerful. And it's very frustrating when you get an organized group playing against you like this. Th these are tweaks that are going to happen. I mean, it, it, I'm not going to promise anything right now. But uh, yeah, definitely we want to make sure that both sides are always having fun. But some combinations are going to be much more powerful than others. And shortly after this statement from Matthew in patch 1.8.3, Odd Bulb received a massive nerf, removing the instant blinding effect and making it far less useful. Hag also received some small quality of life buffs. And the DVD community was reassured that the devs knew that playing killer can be a bad experience because even the game director gets bullied in Dead by Daylight. I think they did a pretty good job so far. <laughs> Number four on the list is the Light in the Fog fundraiser for puppets. It's no surprise that when we put out the call to the community to come together for this amazing human, that over 100 of your favorite Dead by Daylight content creators didn't hesitate to agree to be part of this historic event for such a beloved member of the community. We present to you the Light in the Fog event. The unfamiliar puppets, one of Dead by Daylight's OG content creators who unfortunately was diagnosed with ALS, which is a terminal disease. But the Dead by Daylight community wanted to make sure they treated one of their own rights. So they set up the Light in the Fog Dead by Daylight fundraising tournament to essentially celebrate the life of Puppers and everything he's brought to Dead by Daylight, play some fun tournament games with each other and raise money for his ALS treatment. Admiral Baru has donated $10,500. Overall, the Dead by Daylight community raised $170,000 to help Puppers with his ALS treatment. Because of the generosity of the Dead by Daylight community in this fundraiser, Puppers was accepted to go to the Cayman Islands to receive stem cell treatment to try and provide some quality of life for him in the years I'm to the come. Same way. I oh, always fuck, I have pizzas in my oven. Holy fuck, I forgot. <laughs> This entire event was really fun. I actually have a video on my channel where I play against True Talent, Hyra Panda, and some other Dead by Daylight content creators. So if you want to find out more about the Light in the Fog fundraiser event, then you can watch that video after you're done here. No, I will not show you my bobs. The fifth and final moment on my list comes from Noob3, one of Dead by Daylight's all-time greatest content creators. And I actually remember where I was when Noob3 uploaded a video called Getting Chased for 20 minutes. This is my all-time favorite video from New Free because he is doing a solo survivor escape streak and he encounters the most incompetent teammate in the world. All right, get off, big boy. Oh, fuck. E Did someone just let go on the hook? Oh, come on, dude. Nope. Please, ah! Or he could just let go. Well, there goes that 21st when streak no zero be cry. Three gens are remaining and two of his teammates have killed themselves instantly on hook, which means Noob 3's 21 survivor escape streak is about to come to the end. But if you know Noob 3, you understand just how good this guy was at looping in his peak. And he decides that he's not giving up just yet. Take the hatch? You can't really take the hatch when someone else is alive. I can find a key. Hello. Oh, windows open. That's not fun. So with an entire Baden preschool worth of pallets at his disposal, Noob3 sets to work at looping this pig into oblivion. The only issue is that his teammate Claudette has decided that this game is over and she is not going to do any more generators. Yeah, I feel like this pig is having a really bad time right now. I kind of want to get a gen done so I can find uh, the hatch before the Claudette dies. Ah, uh, found it. Oh, she healed. Yo, we could probably still get out to be honest. I don't you, my pretty. All right, one more 
gen? Longest game? I don't know. I'm kind of scared for the no ID. Like, I don't want to do this last gen. Do I still have that pallet in there? I think I do. Let it! Can you do a fucking gen? You think she is? Yo, let's go check. Where is this Claudette, dude? Not a single gen has been touched. But despite the fact that Noob3 managed to loop the killer for 20 minutes this match, Claudette decided not to do the last generator and instead opted in to hide for the rest of the match. Noob3 got caught and had to sit on hook and watch as this Claudette did absolutely nothing, despite the fact that she had 20 minutes to complete a single generator. Doing gens, you became a big meme in the Dead by Daylight community after this video. And it was only as I was editing this video that I realized that YouTube has actually removed this video from Noob3's channel due to a copyright claim. A lot of his videos have been blocked in many territories. So that's the end of my list for now. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section below if there was any moments you think should have made it into this video. And maybe I'll make a second video in the future.